We have now arrived at one of my main locations for my trip in Turkey this summer, the medieval Armenian city of Ani. I suspect this might not be one of the most well-known historical sites in Turkey, but it's definitely one with a very interesting past and complex present. At its height in the 11th century, Ani, which was then the capital of Bagratid, Armenia, had an estimated population of up to 100,000 inhabitants, which was quite huge at that time. Today, not so much remains of the city. Most of the buildings have throughout the century have been reduced to rubble. However, the most important religious buildings and some of the defensive structures are still standing, although in varying conditions. One reason for it being unknown is probably the location, which is in the furthest east of Turkey, right by the border of the Republic of Armenia. And during the Cold War, this was a NATO USSR border, so to visit this site you needed a special permission. And also you couldn't take pictures, so there was that. <laughs> and even though the Cold War is over today, the situation is not ideal. For example, Turkey and Armenia have no formal relations and the border crossing, well, there is no border crossing between the countries, even though they are neighbors. And the fact that one of the most important Armenian historical sites is located on the border makes it quite interesting. But in any case, nowadays, Ani is open for visitors. You just need to buy a ticket at the entrance to get in. No need for special permissions. That was done away with in 2004. And well, Turkey has been promoting it more as a tourist site. And in 2016, it gained status as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I first found out about this location and was searching information about the castles of the Armenian kingdom of Kilikia, which was located by the Mediterranean Sea, so quite far from here. It turned out this kingdom was founded by Armenians fleeing the Seljuk Turk invasion of Bagratir Armenia and, of course, uh, the sacking of Ani, which happened in 1064. Naturally, I became curious about this city and I found out it still existed, with many of its important buildings still standing. It seemed like a very impressive site with an interesting history and for a long time it was one of my top locations to visit, until now, that is. When I've finally been able to visit it, even though there has been a plague going on. Now you are probably wondering, how did one of the most important medieval cities in this region end up in this state? Well, the short answer, maybe boring one, is that, well, control of the trade Druze was lost. How did that happen then? Well, for that I guess we need a bit longer answer, which includes sieges, sackings, plagues, in other words, the things you would typically associate with the Middle Ages. As you can imagine, prosperous cities bring jealous neighbors, and the first ones to manage to gain control over the city was the Byzantine Empire in 1045. After that, the list of invaders goes long and on, it changed hands between different factions many times in the following centuries. However, it still experienced times of stability. For example, some of the monuments still standing originate from the Armenian Saqqarid dynasty in the late 12th century. But that was not to last. In 1236, the city was captured by the Mongols, and well, these continued invasions had, well, it caused mass migration, so it was not very good for the stability since people, well, felt the need to flee from these invasions. And also in 1319, a devastating earthquake struck the city, and well, by the mid 14th century, the city seems to have lost control of the trading routes, and well, the importance of the city faded in the following centuries. One thing I'm not to mention, though, at least in the sources I found on the internet, is the Black Death, which struck this region in, well, the mid 14th century. I still need to confirm this, but my feeling is that it must have had some importance in the downfall of Ani. After all, we have all experienced in the last two years what a plague does to trade. The most important monument that is still standing is the main church, the Ani Cathedral, which was completed in the year well, either 1001 or 1010. It shares many architectural traits with the Gothic-style churches that later appeared in Europe. I'm not an expert in art history, so I cannot comment whether there is a direct connection. Some say there is, but then again others don't, so yeah, I don't really know. In any case, it's a very impressive building and one can only have imagine what it must have looked like when the dome was still intact. And yeah, this dome is supposed to have uh, fallen in the 1319 earthquake, so quite a long time ago already. Of course there have been more earthquakes after that, so it has suffered even more damage alongside many of the other buildings. And a lot of buildings have collapsed and that's why of course there is so much trouble all, all over the place. And in the cathedral many supporting structures have been built both inside and outside the cathedral, so I really, well I hope it won't collapse in the next earthquake because it looks rather far gone. And earthquakes do happen rather often in this region. The most recent severe one was in 1988. Now the cathedral might be the biggest one, but the other remaining buildings are quite interesting also. For example, the St. Gregory of Tigran Honens church, which was built in 1215, and well, still today it contains a lot of interesting frescoes that have not been destroyed, so yeah, it's very interesting, even the museum we could call it today.
Another one of my favorites is the Saint Gregory of the Abu Ghamir family, which has a very interesting octagonal layout, which has also very nice acoustics inside. And one thing I noticed is that from the outside, it seems much smaller than it does from the inside. So, I mean, I think it has to do with how it's built very high on the inside. So that was a quite interesting surprise. And on the road to the citadel, there is the Minotaur Mosque, which was probably built during the rule of the Kurdish Shadali dynasty that ruled in the late 11th century. But a lot of its history seems unclear. It was not open when I visited, but I've heard that it was possible to go up into the minaret before. Well, of course, it would be nice to see what the view was from up there, but I continued to the citadel, which also has a very nice view. And the citadel, well, it's mostly a heap of rocks also, but yeah, as I said, the view is very good. You get a nice panorama over the area and of what remains of the medieval city and the surrounding landscape. Unfortunately, I could not fly the drone because of the very strong winds, so I didn't want to repeat the mishap I had at this uh, Satan's castle like a few days before, or the day before, actually. <laughs> One church which might be very easy to miss is the Gagikashen or King Gagik's church, which is totally in ruins. And well, this was the tallest building in Ani with around 50 meters, but unfortunately it wasn't very stable and it collapsed already in the early 11th century, not long after it was built, unfortunately. From the 15th century onwards, Ani fell into obscurity and at some point it was abandoned totally. It was inhabited for some centuries, but by a very few like people, only a few villages or so. And by the mid-18th century, the last monks left the last monastery. Any interest in this medieval city didn't appear again before the 19th century. And when the Russians conquered this area from the Ottoman Empire in 1878, it regained a lot of interest again, because academics came from Russia and they started doing archaeological digs. And a lot of interesting structures and objects were uncovered. And at that time, there was a museum at this miniature mosque. But of course, today there is no museum left. I mean, there was nothing in this uh, mosque anymore. And the reason being, of course, is the First World War, and this region became a war zone during that time. And, well, the ruins became more damaged also because of that. But uh, the, a lot of objects, around 6,000 or so, I read, were um, saved from this area, and they were moved to Yerevan, which you can also see them still today. So, well, now I know where to travel to next, at least one more location to go to. Okay, maybe not on this trip, but some other trip, because it's not really... what <laughs> wasn't, wasn't wise to cross the border at this time because I would not maybe have been able to go back into Turkey. Of course, I would have to go through two countries to get there. But in any case, a trip for another time. During the First World War, Ani eventually ended up in the Turkish Republic. And well, now we're almost back at where we started. And because really, it's only after the Cold War that there has been an increase in interest in making Ani into a tourist site. For example, the need of a permission to visit Ani was done away with in 2004. And well, a lot of restorations have been done also before that also. I mean, in the 90s, some restorations were done. But a lot of criticism has been directed towards these reconstructions. The site virtualani.org contains a lot of documentation and lists many problems with the restorations. For example, lack of archaeological reference, what things are supposed to look like, wrong type of materials, destroying old constructions, and on some structures more new rocks than original now exist as a result which has also resulted in some collapses. The restorations are clearly evident at the North City Gates, and especially so at the Merchant's Palace. I really do wonder why they felt the need to do such heavy reconstructions, and sometimes it is best to let ruins be ruins. Of course, some structures are definitely in need of support, like the churches, but this is just overkill. I mean, it's a bit too much. This is one of the examples where you have more new rocks than original. One could say that many things in the site's contemporary history have not been done in an ideal way. I mean, everything from restorations, some archaeological digs have been criticized, and well, not to mention the totally unnecessary quarrying on the Armenian side of the border, which was done with explosives, and this caused the buildings to shake, and well, this caused further damage, so yeah, totally unnecessary. Well, for the future of this site, it seems it will stay open as a tourist destination, but since it's by the border, well, who knows what could happen. And also the buildings are, well, some of them are not in that good condition, so if you still want to see them, it may be it. <laughs> if you want to visit this place, it, don't delay it too much. And one term to describe tourism to this place could be dark tourism, considering its current condition, also its violent history. But of course, the history of this location is not all dark, I would say. I mean, these ruins are the evidence of a once thriving and influential civilization.
So what were my impressions of Ani? Did it live up to my expectations? Well, first of all, I have to say it's a very impressive site, even though most of it's in a very bad shape. I mean, there's still a lot of buildings standing. And I mean, I was quite surprised by this uh, frescoes in this one of the churches because I didn't expect that really. Of course, I had looked at some pictures before, but I didn't expect that many frescoes in one church. And of course, the history of the location, not only the medieval one, but also the contemporary is quite fascinating. And well, I would very much like to visit the region again. There's a lot of things to explore. For example, I've heard about an underground network. And also there is a huge amount of more historical sites, both Armenian and other in this region. And as a bonus in the nearby city of Kars, you can find the cutest street dogs in Turkey. I mean, just look at how fluffy and cute they are. In any case, thanks for watching. This video turned out to be a bit different than my other in my travel series. Had I tried it to make it in the same style, I would have ended up with a 30 minute video at least. And I wanted to experiment with some different styles of making a video. So if you have any thoughts about it, how it worked or anything else really well, then you can leave a comment below. But that is all for this time. Thanks for watching. Bye.